resale market, you know, two billion dollar industry. If I'm a kid, how do I even go up against these bots? Like, how do I get my hand on any of these sneakers? Is it is it is it going and sitting outside of the retail store? Like, how how if if I don't have the resources, how do these I get it? Press these kids. These kids know more about bots than the older heads, man. <laughs> they know it all. The, you got to remember when we were kids. What, what did we have? What did our parents give us? Toys, books. These kids got the iPad now. They're doing this all day. So when they're 15, 16, they know how to do all these bots. They know how to do all of this. I mean, my viewership goes from people that are 13 years old to 65 years old. And the young ones are the ones that are telling me, oh, I could hook you up with the bots. And then they, they I, I see their face and they're little children. I'm like, I can't take it, you know, I should take them serious, but I'm an adult. I'm not trying to deal with no kids, you know, but they know everything about these bots. It's it, the young, these young kids that are 15, 16, they're, they're crushing it. They're, and they're actually hurting the game. A lot of them for the people that are just fans of shoes, like myself, that just wants to buy a pair of shoes to wear, you know, or to have for a collection. Cause I, cause I am a collector. I am not just someone that just has, 400 and somewhat pairs of shoes just to wear a different pair every week. I, I do consider myself a collector. I think if you have more than 10 of anything, you may call yourself a collector, right? Correct. So. Okay, so if I'm trying to get into this business, uh, give, me, give me some of the do's and the don'ts if I want to get into the resale business. The resale business you gotta know. You gotta know what's hot. First of all, you gotta have your ear out there in the streets to know what's what people want. You know, because if you're just buying anything, that's gonna screw you over too, because you're gonna be buying stuff and it's gonna be sitting, and then you're gonna have a whole bunch of inventory that's not moving. And and to me, reselling ain't worth it unless you're gonna make a couple of hundred dollars off a flip, because there, there's people that are, that are like trying to get into it and and they'll buy a pair of Jays. Like there was a Jordan one that just released. The, the value of the resale was only worth about 250. The shoe cost 190. So how much money are you actually making after you box it up, ship it, all that stuff? You're making peanuts. I mean, not peanuts, but is it really worth it? It's you're only worth it. Your perspective. You're talking from your perspective. Yeah, you, this is my perspective. Yeah, yes. but if you if you're uh, a teenager, if you're in your early 20s, or or if you're just doing this in terms of volume, all mm -hmm. of that adds up. Yeah. Yes. So you got to be wise with it. You got to know what pride you got to really know this, this game. Like you really got to know this game, unless you got a plug. If you get man sizes through some store in the back, like back door in it, you know, and you, you're able to get, get, get a full size run of some hot. And it's simple. And that's what a lot of people are doing. So that leads me to another question. Are retail stores, are they a factor? If Sean Prez right now, if I want to get something hot, you know, most of these kicks, they're being sold online. You know, can I go walk into a Foot Locker and expect to come out with something that anybody would see me and be like, oh, he got some hot joints on. Or for anybody walking into retail these days, you're kind of late to the party. Those are yes. just what everybody else doesn't want. Yeah. You're late to the party. Unless, I mean, everything's crazy now. Like, if you want a sneaker at Foot Locker and if it's something popular or something hot, everything's done through app. app these apps, they have the raffles. So you got to go to the Foot Locker app. You got to do a raffle. Sometimes I'll be forgetting to even do the raffle, you know? But I got plugs. People, people are running around. I mean... People hit me up. Yo, you missed out on that shoe. I got you. I got shoes coming in this week. A bunch of stuff that I wasn't able to get. So, you know, pe people look out for me, but you're not going to find much. Even a, even a white on white pair of Air Force Ones is hard to buy now, believe it or not. Like, like just the clean ass white on white. And, you know, we used to be able to eat, buy these like ease. Correct. Just walk right in there. We buy two, three pairs, right? Now, now it's not easy, depending on what city you're from. I know some of the viewers or listeners may say, oh, man, we got them at a... That's, it depends on the city. Wow. Yeah. 
so for any again, you know, because this is you know just information that I think people should should know. If you're walking into a regular retailer, you're probably somebody who is either out of the loop or you're not in the business because you're just Foot Locker is not going to sell anything that's of value. Facts. I mean, you may be able to catch a clean pair of Air Maxes or something like that, you know, but anything that ha that has a value of, of like as far as reselling, you're not going to catch nothing just walking into the store. Okay, I keep hearing you mention a plug. When you say a plug, is this just uh, somebody who has access to bots? Is this somebody who works at a at a Nike or an Adidas? And and how valuable are these plugs? Are they making money? You know, just being able to say, "Look, I got such and such on the way." I'm putting a call into you first. Like, is, is that a whole business in and of itself? Of course. I mean, look, it's just like any business with relationships. You got you got that one person that you know that, that could take care of you, you know? I'm sure you know people, if you need something, you could call them up, right? If you need to get Absolutely. some, the hot, the hot thing, the hot product, the hot this, that's the plug. I mean, it could be it could be all of those things you mentioned. It could be the guy that works at the store that manages a store that get you know someone that's sick with the box and 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 be able to just get like twenty pairs and like here. Like I had someone that sent me a pair. Of the, I got these Jordans right here. I missed out on. They sent them to my PO box because I always leave my PO box in um in the description of my videos. They just sent they sent me shoes. I don't even ask for them. They just mail me them. They're like, oh, I know you got them. And I know this dude is ill with it. Like he got so many plugs. So he did. It's all about who you know with anything in life and definitely with the sneakers. Like, cause, cause the thing is, look, they stopped making, they, after last year, um, they really stopped making as many Jordans as they used to. If you look back five years ago, people were complaining. Ah, they don't make enough Jordans. Everything's selling out. People are getting shot over the sneakers. A lot of violence. So Jordan Brand five years ago said, you know what? Let me make, we're going to make a ton of shoes. And they did. They made a ton. What happened? A lot of supply. What happens? The demand goes down because the price of the shoe ain't worth nothing no more, right? So they're all sitting there. I'm, I'm sure they were dusting the shoes off. You know, there will be 20 retros, bro, just sitting on the shelves when you go to the mall. And it was easy. It was the way it used to be back in the days. You walk, if you got the money, you get the shoe, right? Unless you're late. I mean, if you're really late to the party, you like two or three weeks later, you know, you may you may not get them. But I think Jordan Brand was forced to make them limited again because it's bad business. You don't want your products sitting on the shelves. No matter what product it is. Imagine back in the days before all the MP MP3s, imagine if Biggie's CDs were just sitting on the shelves. That's a bad look. Like if they were not selling well and doing numbers, any artist, you know. They gotta, they gotta be moving, or else people are gonna say, "Oh, they're whack." Because number, everything's about the numbers. So when you have, when you have like 20, 30 pairs of Jordans, well, not thirty, but 15, 20 retros just sitting on the shelves, it forces Jordan Brand to cut back and say, "Listen, we can't put out this many shoes because it, it's, it's, it's not, um, not, um, there's not a lot of hype." So you it's not I mean? even, it's not even so much or uh, how dope the shoe looks. It really comes down to the supply chain. It comes yes. down to accessibility. A, a supply and demand all day. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message. Feel free to share. Peace and love.